Kia ora te whanau. I'm Gio and welcome to another installment of Geo's Tech, where I let you have a look behind the scenes of the gaming and streaming setup I've got here. If you want to check out my other channel where I actually do the gaming and streaming, I'll link that down below. So you can feel free to stop by and say hi. I would love it if you could leave a like on the video, maybe subscribe to the channel if this helps you out in any way, but equally, as long as you get something out of this video, then that's all that I am to do. My only goal for this channel is to let you have a look behind the scenes and show you how some of the bits and pieces work. Maybe give you ideas for your own gaming, streaming, and content creation setup. So in that respect, let's dive into my latest piece of productivity kit, I'd call it. If you see my previous video on the Loop Deck Live S, you'll know that this is the smallest offering from Loop Deck, who typically do bigger productivity focused, uh, I guess, macro pads with screens on, obviously, and dials with this one. I've been using it the last six months and i have it's become indispensable, really. When you plug it in for the first time, it's very straightforward. PC will recognize it as a new external device and then all you need to do is navigate to loopdeck.com, go to downloads, and then download for either Mac or Windows, whichever your platform is, and we'll go from there. Let's jump over, shall we? Once you've downloaded it, you'll be greeted with this screen where you get to choose your device, set up a profile, and make a workspace, basically. So think of it like this. These are your Loop Deck offerings. If you've got the Loop Deck Live, Live S like I do, then select that. Main profile is basically whichever profile you'll be using most often. You can see from the drop down that I have a number of these already loaded in. And then, then your workspace is basically whichever section you're working on at that point. To start us off with, let's jump into Marketplace in this top right hand corner. Once you open that, you'll be greeted with, well, the Loop Deck Marketplace basically. In here, you'll find everything you need from profiles to sound packs, emotes and badges. Um, if you have an if you have an own 3D account, you will be able to come into here and buy on own 3D. Let's jump into profiles to start with. The great thing about this is you can pick and choose which applications and bits and pieces that you actually use. Things like to eventually resolve color panel. There is an Audacity one. We have things for Blender, which I've been using a bit recently. If you use any of the Adobe Illustrator suite, uh, you know, the productivity stuff, uh, you've got the Premiere Pro, the Affinity Photo. So these are all profiles that are pre preloaded by Loop Deck that will give you a layout for each program specifically. So if you look at the Blender one, uh, and we go back to here, I've also got the Blender one loaded here and it will give you a pre-set up uh, section of switches, which obviously changes on the device. So here you can see we're in the camera navigation section. We have navigation camera button here. So if we push this, we would end up here. However, if we go across to the top right, you can see we're now in uh, object mode and these give you shortcuts to each of the different actions. Again, pushing through the buttons, we can go down through the different things all the way around. And then if we want, we can come back to OBS, the main one, and I'm back to my main profile. This is one that I've set up personally, uh, completely separate. You know, this is one I use all the time. Straight off the bat with the dials, you get a couple of different functions. So with the upper knob, this is usually your volume control knob for your speakers. Very handy if you don't have a media control on your laptop or you don't uh, have a separate audio interface. The lower knob controls the backlight on the device. So if you want to turn it off, let's say, you can just dial the dial down and it's off. The dials also have a nice clicky function. So if you click in, you can have dynamic on and off. Uh, you can set them to, uh, obviously you can see here, the, the, the top one is set to both volume control and mute and unmute. The knobs themselves have a really nice, like graded uh, click to them as you turn them. So there's no, all fiddling around wildly for a, the spot right on the dial, you know you want to get it to the perfect number. <laughs> as you can see, the icons to the right show you what the actual dial is doing. So as we push this in and out, as you can see, we've got mute and unmute and obviously dynamic on and off. Uh, I'll explain what dynamic mode is in a second, but um, just know that it's awesome. This is kind of my home screen for when I'm streaming. So I've got uh, Twitch, shortcuts to Twitch and uh, Spotify, Audacity and other productivity stuff in the corner. So let's jump into the marketplace and just have a look at what's in there and what you can do while you're in here. So the profiles basically are those profiles that I showed you initially. So you can have things like DaVinci Resolve and, and Blender. Those are ones that I use all the time. So I have those set up already. 
I downloaded those from the screen here. Uh, most of them are free. Some of them you will have to pay for, like the DaVinci Resolve color panel. It's more of a pro style of thing, so I haven't used it. Jumping over to plugins, which is, this is basically where all the functionality comes in. So if you've got things like, you've got Loop Deck AI Assistant, which I haven't used, Win Audio. So there's one for Twitch. There's also one for Streamlabs as well. If you scroll down a little bit, we've got nano leaf control. If you have nano leaves, if you want to use this purely for work, we've got a Microsoft Teams function, a VLC player, OBS Studio, which is always a good one to have, obviously using that for this. A stream timer controller, if you have a stream timer, Razer audio mixer, There's things like Photoshop and the, the rest of the Adobe suite. If you've got any Philips Hue devices, you can control them through this as well. Again, Streamlabs. Go XLR and Elgato. So there's lots of Elgato functionality built in as well. We've got a weather widget just in case you need that. And volume control, also a really good helpful one. Now, straight off the bat, you have some basic default icons. You can use either, you know, the main icons for whichever program it is that you're using. So Stream, uh, Steam or DaVinci Resolve or whatever. And you can also choose new icons. So these come preloaded and they're the perfect size and everything. You can just overlay them. Um, so you can see I've downloaded a couple like the text icon backgrounds, the smart switch icons. There's a bunch of them you can go through. Like I said, some of them are uh, from owned. You've got some from Icon City. Basically, you can make your own as well, which is quite nice. You can choose any individual little icon that you want to put in as a background. And there's quite a few that you can choose from for free. There are some that are game specific. There are some that are productivity specific. So here we've got some Microsoft Flight Simulator ones, some racing, farming simulator, if that's your stuff. Uh, as we go down, there's some other ones here. You can see the ones for Blender, um, Capture One. You get the idea. You know what's going on. And these are some some are paid some are free you can also download free and paid ones from the website or you can look online for them as well as long as they've got dot icons file you can load them in as a preset all good as far as sound packs go i haven't used these yet there are some quite fun ones uh twitch sound emotes you know jump scares and stuff kind of fun stream overlays as well which can be really helpful you can go through uh buy them on owned up to you i haven't bought any yet I don't believe i think you can you can get some for free look uh emotes and badges again through owned and then presets and styles these are a few different ones that are preloaded onto here as well but it's up to you whether you want to go through this way or not i haven't personally but obviously you can so jumping back into the main software what is there to do so you can see if you right click on a button, we have, so you can see if I right click on a button, we have multiple options for creating custom actions. So you've got keyboard shortcuts, macros, multi toggles, run, open application, web page, sound and text. All very useful, all in different ways. Uh, we also have assigned touch pages and assigned dial pages and assigned workspaces. So if you want to switch quickly between workspaces, you can have them in here. Now, personally, I've got my workspaces assigned to the actual touch buttons or if you don't want to right click and add them that way you can go through this options list on the left so you can see little icons for each of your plugins that you've got installed so you've got obs spotify i've been using streamerbot and twitch obviously uh there are other ones so i've hidden all the ones that i'm not using at the moment so let's go let's um open up a new page shall we and here we are completely blank page it's opened up it as a new one here and i think probably the easiest way to go first is let's assign an action to get us back to that main page, shall we? Let's go, did I call it launch center? I did, I called it launch center. So let's put this one here. Oh, there. launch center, there we go. Awesome, so this, if I click it, will take us back to the main page. And let's add one here for touch page two. Now we can go back. So here we are on the second page. Let's start populating things. You know what we should do first? Let's have a look at this launch center. The icon's pretty boring, so let's go into it hit the little pencil icon and we can edit it. So you can go through and browse your own files and you know, and pick out an icon that you quite like. Uh, you can have a look at the icon library. You can rotate background, change your background color and you can also hide the image, which is, you know, if you want to, you can. You can make it like a little hidden 
thing that only you know is there. Go into the icon library for a start. You can see all of the icon packs that I've downloaded on the left hand side here. There's quite a lot of them. Some of them are quite cool. Some of them are okay. I use bits and pieces from either ones. So let's go with, the, I quite like these smart switch icons. They're just kind of, you know, basic geometric shapes with a bit of color to them. So one of the icon packs I quite like is the uh, keyboard layout icons. These are pretty cool. They're just kind of basic, you know, icons for your keyboard. But um, I don't know, I just quite enjoy them. So let's go, let's put the, let's do a right key, shall we? It's, so it points right. We can scale this down a little bit, put it in the middle. Let's change our background color to, let's go for a, no, the red's not looking good. Let's go with a ooh, nice blue, how about that? Now we can write whatever we want. So this is the icon for page one. Change text to, I think I use all the time. What are, impact's quite good. It looks good on the page. Uh, we keep it white, we make it a bit bigger. Let's say it's got 50. And then we'll go back to here. Move. Page one up to the top. A little like that. You get the idea. It's fairly straightforward. You choose what you want to do. And once we do that, saved into our icon, and we can see. Boop, back to page one. Back to page two. So now we've got that sorted. Let's try something a little bit different, shall we? Let's go into the loop deck and let's go for a multi action, a macro. So we can call this whatever we like. Let's change this to start string. So for our action, we want to, maybe we should go with, we'll go with open application. And then we can see that all of the applications that we have on PC are run through here. So we can open loop deck, we could loop, we could open things like OBS, which is probably what we want to do. Next up, let's add another one. Let's open another application. What, what else are we going to use for streaming? Uh, let's go with, oh, I'm going to use Discord. So that's a good one. And then uh, let's go with a, uh, let's go with web page. Let's go with, we want to open Twitch, twitch.tv. And maybe one more thing. Let's see, what, what else can we do? Let's play a sound so that we know we've done it. Uh, let's do it, the outputs to our speak, uh, headphones so we know what it is. And we can browse to a, a sound here. Uh, let's go with, go with a boom, shall we? So once we've hit save, you'll notice that down in the stored actions, we've got the start stream, like, um, we've got the start stream action. And we can, let's change the icon on this as well. Let's go for something. What's in the objection? No. Neon streaming. Let's go in this one. And there must be a start stream, right? Let's go with the on button. It's kind of cool. I like it. Start stream, save. And now we can just go whoop, drag that on. Oh, I didn't hit save. So we didn't change the icon. And there we go. We have a very new, brand new icon all ready to go. So now, even if we change to something else, we can now use that as a stored action way down the bottom here. Obviously sorted alphabetically. I don't know why I've got three saved as Steam. That's kind of weird. So now the, the quite good thing about this is if you say you want to delete one of these, we can get rid of, uh, maybe we've, we've already got OBS open. So let's get rid of OBS. So the great thing about this as well is that we can add things like, rather than an action, we can add a delay. So let's say it delays 2000 milliseconds, which is two seconds. So once we've added our delay, we don't really want it at the end, do we? So if you hover over the number here, you can, Click and drag, and let's move it here. So we open Discord, delay for a couple of seconds, and then, and then we'll play the sound. So now that we've got that, let's save it. There we go. Very nice. Works perfectly. Let's close Discord again. We don't need that. <laughs> so moving on from the custom side of things. This is things you can build out by yourself. You know, it give you infinite customizability for whatever section of work that you're working on at the time. It's awesome. You can add in multi-toggles. Uh, multi-toggles are one that are really quite good as well. I've got a couple set up already. If we go over here to uh, streaming section, so you can see this is one that you just pick out of the OBS section. Recording toggle. You got replay buffer save, replay buffer toggle screenshot which i'm going to be using in one of my channel point rewards on twitch so that's going to be kind of fun if you were looking for something specifically for your dials you can just change this to all of the dial options and now all you can see are the little turny buttons so if we could scroll through here we've got uh dial adjustments we've got different media sources and the os ones 
So these are quite good for volume levels. Uh, you can actually change things like uh, drag left and drag right on your mouse. Uh, any movement, horizontal and vertical, on your scroll wheel, which is quite a good one. If you don't have a scroll wheel or your scroll wheel busted for some reason. Oh, yeah, sorry, here's your mouse wheel. And you can choose whichever option you like based on what your preferences are. Let's turn that off. Obviously, you can choose for press actions as well rather than rotate actions, but uh, we don't really need to go into that, do we? But I, what I personally like to do is use StreamerBot to control a lot of what goes on on stream. So any action that you have in StreamerBot, say, whichever ones you want to use, these are all classes actions, so you can put a button to them. It's quite easy to do. Let's go back to that page we made before. Where were we? So we have uh, Dumb Ways to Die action. We can just drag this on. We do to here. Now, every time we press Dumb Ways to Die action, it'll trigger it on OBS. And then obviously, as we're streaming, we'll be on Twitch. Another great feature is the Twitch compatibility. So you can activate chat only, follower only modes. Uh, create clip buttons, quite a good one as well. Or if you've got things like sending messages to chat, that's a quite easy one to use as well. Now, don't forget that you can use these as part of multi-actions with other things that you choose from, you know, other sections. You don't just have to use things within the Twitch categories. Let's go over and open DaVinci Resolve now. I want to show you a little bit of the productivity side of things and possibly my favorite feature of this whole, this whole thing. Let's open a new project. Now you can see, since we're in DaVinci Resolve, we now have a DaVinci Resolve set up on the actual screen itself. Very nice. This is the one that I like. I've set it up myself. I've got everything in the close proximity to the dials. So let's just drag some footage on, shall we? Just so we've got something to play around with. So this is my latest video for the actual streaming side of things. Did a Strand Titan build for Destiny 2 if anyone's interested. We can actually scrub through the timeline with the dial button, which I've set up as possibly one of the best things, the most used things that I've got. Makes for very quick editing, as well as a split clip, ripple delete, and then the alt shift and control, which I often use, which saves me swapping back between keyboard and loop deck, which is very handy. I said I'd show you one of my favorite features, which is a dynamic mode switch, which I'll show you now. So say we've got OBS here, we've got the loop deck configuration. So this is where we're working on stuff, da -da -da -da. we're working away in loop deck and we want to just swap back, but we don't want to work on this page. We want our DaVinci Resolve page. What do we do? Do we, we go to the main profiles, but select Resolve and then go back? But no, dear viewer, we don't have to. You can see I've got dynamic mode switched on here. So that just means that let's click out of that. We're in Loop Deck now. This is active. Now, if we click across to DaVinci Resolve, boom, DaVinci Resolve, all of our buttons right there. And we can go through each of the presets. Can't tell you how nice it is just to be able to switch backwards and forwards between the two different apps and we have our preset. It's really, really helpful. Let's jump back to the Loop Deck software. Let's go back to our page that we created. Super easy to use, drag and drop system. What more can you want? Actually, if you do want more, let me know because I'd be interested to hear what other people are actually using it for. It'd be quite interesting. To sum it all up, does the Loop Deck Live S do things that the Elgato Stream Deck can't? Well, yeah, up until recently, at least anyway, they did release one with buttons, turning knobs at least anyway, but it is cheaper and I think more user friendly. I quite like the the buttons are an LCD screen with a little bit of haptic feedback, which you can dial in via the software. You can set them for long or short or anywhere in between. So there you have it. A little bit of a behind the scenes on the setup and how to get started with your Loop Deck Live S as far as software goes. I think it's really quite user friendly and like the actual software really kind of walks you through it as well. I know these are typically used for more productivity style things, but I think the Loop Deck Live S, the smaller version, gives you all of the functionality of those productivity tabs that would be big for the uh, the rest of the Loop Deck offerings. It also gives you the desk space back when you're doing things like streaming. I don't know about you, but I constantly have stuff just scattered across my desk. I should be should be better about it, but I'm not. <laughs> so there we have it. That's it. I mean, let me know what you think. I really enjoy using this Loop Deck Live S. It's built solidly. It's got good usability, great software really easy to use I'm trying to work out what i'm going to do a video on next maybe we jump into some of the streamer bot actions that i've got set up for stream 
Uh, maybe you want to know a bit more about the PC that I'm using. Uh, whatever it is, just let me know and I will be happy to report on it. Um, oh, what about uh, my lighting setup? That's a bit of an odd one as well. If you've seen my setup video, you can see there's a bit of jank to that. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I have a Discord set up for uh, the gaming side of things if you'd like to join that. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate people hanging out and actually coming to watch these videos. Hopefully you got something useful out of it. And if not, well, hopefully it was entertaining. But if it wasn't entertaining, you won't be here at the end, right? Uh, anyway, I'm Gio, Kaki Teano. Stay safe, be kind, and I'll see you in the next one.